Hello world, today's episode is one I've been looking forward to for quite some time now. <clears throat> I'll be building one of my favorite heroes from Japan, and it's from the Nanoblock Kara Nano series. Ultraman! I imported this guy from Japan just so I could build it on my channel, and after having it stored away for over a year, the time has finally come to put him together on this episode of Jamang by Builds. I've built my share of Kara Nano models on the channel before, during Season 1 with Mazinger Z and Ava Unit 2. Those models have points of articulation, but this one doesn't seem to have any at all, which might be a good thing because Mazinger Z gave me so much trouble. Ultraman flies in at a 2-star difficulty with 200 pieces, and includes everything that you see right here. Let's not waste any more time, let's get these out of here and get started. Let's build up! Begin the offensive push into the old city.
strong energy signature just ahead. Could it be an Alpha Nephilim? some encoded radio signals not far from the area you cleared in Old Toronto. Your mission is to find the source. was evacuated ages ago. There should be no one here. Sophia, check if Canadian forces have any units in the area.
Alright, and here we have Ultraman built to the finish. I'll try not to be a fanboy over this one, but I really do love the way that this turned out. While there were definitely a couple of moments where I was left scratching my head, seeing this completed is truly a breath of fresh air when it comes to the Kara Nano line. This is a model of Ultraman shooting his signature Spatium Beam from the series, and I feel that they pulled it off very well on the visual side of things. The use of clear and translucent blue blocks for the attack gives off a nice contrast between it and Ultraman respectively. Of course Ultraman looks great too, the red and grey of his suit is represented well here, and Kawada made sure to incorporate the eye holes on his yellow eyes featured on his original suit. Although it's obstructed by his left arm, even his signature color timer is represented here. This is just my humble opinion. I'm not really a fan of using these boxes as a display piece. On paper, sure, it sounds like a great idea. It reminds me of the Funko Pop line, which is pretty cool, but you'll spend more time wrestling with the tabs on the backdrop's base just to keep your character in place. It never works out for me. Come on, why don't you just cooperate? At least for the video. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Needless to say, I'll be investing in nanoblock display cases, but if you can pull it off, I salute you. Building Ultraman was really fun, but then confusion arrived and it decided to stay for a little while. When I got to this point of the instructions, it's obvious the area that I should be building is what's highlighted. However, I got a little thrown off and made a weird assumption that I should be adding an extra 2x1 block next to the red 3x2 block. Funny now that I got this zoomed in, I can see that the gray 2x1 block is shaded. Thanks confusion! Because of that assumption, I wasn't able to put Ultraman's head on, to a point where I had to stop recording just to figure it out. So I pretty much ended up with Ultraman having a raised shoulder. Thanks confusion! That aside, none of the confusion takes away from how cool this model is. And speaking of how cool this is, check this out. I actually built the Mini Nano version of this model. What's crazy is, it's not very often in the time that I've been building Nanoblock that I can build something identical to something else that I built. So this is honestly a treat. This is also a shameless plug. I built the Ultraman Mini Nano series on my channel. Check it out when you get a chance. So what's the verdict? And that wraps it up for today's episode of Juang Bai Builds. I will catch you on the next episode. In the meantime, keep on building. See you next time. Chew-watch!